Well, good evening, everyone. We have uh, Galahad Chiefs head coach Dave Rennie and Stephen Donald captain. Ollie, will you kick us off? Yeah, sure. um, Stephen, for, for you on the field last week against the, the Māori All Blacks, the Lions looked content on taking shots at goal on those early penalties. Tonight they looked like they wanted to attack a lot more. Did that surprise you at all out there? And, and do you think uh, your defence was, was up to it? Oh, well, well, the score's 34-6, you'd probably say no, but um, no, I mean, the game unfolded in a way that you'd probably feel you could probably buff the ball around a bit more, but uh, yeah, I think she, she was a bit of an arm wrestle early, and, uh, and as we got further behind, we obviously uh, tried to push things, and uh, often when you push things, uh, it can get away on you, so um, just one of those nights where plenty of effort from the boys, but um, in the end, we were, uh, we were beaten by a, a bloody good Lions team. Uh, Dave, um, I'm not just talking about tonight, but what have you seen in the lines that you think might cause the All Blacks some problems? <laughs> not sure if you're asking the right person uh, for that, but um, oh, they got better and better, haven't they? And they continually stepped up. I, I thought this, the midweek side uh, played pretty well against the Highlanders last week and probably got himself in a position to win that, so uh, they were certainly pretty clinical tonight. Um, we expected a fair bit of kicking, but to be honest, they had a lot of territory and, and ball down our end, so they probably didn't kick as much. Um, but only you got to hand it to them. You know, we, we battled to get our set piece going. Um, they strangled us and anticipated nudges in behind and so on. So, you know, they did a good job. Stephen, 13-6, you're still in it in the second half. Talk us through the penalty try. What was your take on that? Um, oh, man. You can't... You can't you can't blame any referee decisions uh, with the scoreline as it finished, and I won't do that. But at 13-6, and uh, there was a period there where I think the game was a bit on a knife edge. Uh, we had 10 minutes of defence fit. I think mean, we pushed them back. And, uh, and yeah, I thought there was a few things that could have gone our way. But, um, yeah, the penalty try was the penalty try. So um, it was a more, so I didn't have a clue what was going on, to be fair. But, uh, no, I mean, there was a 10-minute period after, the, after half-time where I thought, here we go. The boys started. Johnny put a few big hits in, and Ziggy was carrying, and, and a few things were going away. And I just thought there was a couple of incidents there that, uh, in a different in a different competition, there could have been a penalty or two. But uh, it was what it was, and, and in the end, we just once you get down twenty points, and and then twenty seven, you know, the game's gone, and, you, and you're pushing it too hard, and uh, and then that's when you, I guess, give up a big scoreline. But um, you know, uh, I was still proud of the effort. Dave, looking ahead to Super Rugby, you mentioned about there was a, an opportunity for some young fellas to impress you tonight. Has anyone lifted their stocks in your eyes with those games of Super Rugby uh, coming up? Oh, look, I, Nigel, it would be good to have a look at the footage, obviously, and uh, to make accurate um, comments on that. But, yeah, look, there's, um, there's some guys who stood up pretty well, I think. You know, um, Chase Teotia probably got a little bit more game time than anticipated. He was... Um, Tony Pulley's done a um, um, you know, patella, so he's going to be out for a long period of time. So uh, pretty exciting for him, and I thought old Red um, Finn Christie fronted pretty well at nine, and the old uh, Scotchman. So he's uh, you know he, he would have enjoyed his encounter out there, and you know so look as Beaver said, the boys worked hard and tried, but uh, we're out muscled really, and and got suffocated, and you know they did a good job. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> We've already had that discussion. D Dave, I'm sure you've um, watched most, if not all, of this talk. Can we um, get a prediction out of you about what's going to happen in the Test Series? Um, I, I just think, look, the Lions are, are getting better and better, aren't they? And, um, you know, when they get uh, settled on combinations and so on, I think it'll be a pretty exciting series. Um, they were able to dominate us, and, and you know, maybe our line out it was most of it were our issues, but um, you're going to come up against a pretty good set piece in the All Blacks, and uh, so I'll have to earn it and fight for it. But um, oh, look, I, I think it's going to be the series that everyone thought it was going to be maybe a month ago. There's maybe been a little bit of doubt recently, but as I mentioned, I think they're getting better and better. and uh, as we know, when they're down to the right end of the field, they can play footy, and saw a bit of that tonight. 
Stephen, um, how did you find the rush defence and do you think the All Blacks will be able to counter that all right? Oh, I mean, uh, as far as for us, we knew it was coming um, and we had a few things we wanted to execute, but uh, I guess just the way it unfolded and uh, how, how our game unfolded, we, we couldn't get everything going that we wanted to. So from our point of view, uh, yeah, they obviously, I mean, it was obvious that they suffocated us and as Ren said, they, they saw our sort of little nudges in behind and a couple of our little plays, but um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, the, the All Blacks have uh, got some fairly handy individuals and uh, they've been planning for this for a long time, so I'm pretty sure they'll have a few tricks up their sleeve too. Um, Dave, the set piece tonight, your thoughts on it? You lost a little bit at line-out time. Um, what do you put it down to and, and how concerning is that going back into Super Rugby? Oh, clearly it's Neil Barnes's fault. <laughs> no. Um, oh, look, it's, it's a combination thing too. There was... Um, we wanted to play um, a bit of tempo line-outs because uh, we didn't want to get them set and we ended up slowing some of our own ball down around that and some of the timing where the throw just come a little bit earlier than, than the jump, etc. So yeah, we put ourselves under a bit of pressure around that and uh, so it's a bit frustrating for all concerned. Um, yeah, the scrum was mixed, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, there's some real challenges in and around that and... Um, you know, I'll leave that to the big boys to talk about, but um, yeah, like I, no doubt our set piece battled a bit tonight, and, and because of that, we struggled to get our game going. Dave, which of the All Blacks coaches with the area of responsibility, which is going to be the most important to get that correct? Which coach with the area of. Um, I've cocked this question up quite royally, haven't I? <laughs> which coach in their area has to get their one absolutely spot on if the All Blacks are to have their best chance? Um, oh, they're all important, aren't they? Because as you saw tonight, you can have all the plans from an attack point of view, but if you don't get your set piece gun, uh, nothing happens. So um, oh, it's all going to be an important part of it. I'd, no doubt if you're ill-disciplined, um, <coughs> lines are a side that can put you in a corner and hurt you as well. So... Um, yeah, well, but certainly, I suppose, Fozzie's area and around attack, uh, they'll have some plans, um, but they're going to do it under a fair bit of heat, and they, they may do it differently to us. So we, we saw most teams playing off nine against them and going around the corner and running into another wall. We tried to play a bit more off ten, prepared to give up eight or ten metres of, um, of um, ground to try and get a quick ball off that ruck to try and stretch my next one, but... They did a job of slowing our pill down and when we come around the corner there was still a bit of a wall there so um, seemed like a really good idea at the time though, eh, Beaver? Um, yeah, so you know, I'm sure the All Blacks will have a plan and as Beaver said, they've got some pretty good cattle. Could you see someone like a sunny Phil with his offloading and the ability to stand in the tackle? Could he be a guy that would be reasonably significant given his skill set? Yeah, like I thought tonight, you know, we were one pass away from getting right in behind them. We, we had a number of guys who got sort of in half breaks and you know, maybe we were a little bit uh, short on on support, working hard enough to get in those positions and um, you know, it's a real strength of the All Blacks obviously when you look at the quality of the midfield. Uh, Dave, what's the plan now Super Rugby wise? Um, how long do the guys have off and will you sort of get them straight back into training for a bit? Any sort of warm up game before competition resumes or? Uh, no, um, we've, we're going to give them 10 days off, So, um, and even then we'll come back in still two weeks before we play the Brumbies, so chance of the boys to freshen up to go away with programs, we'll get them out of Hamilton and uh, spend a bit of time with family, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, and, and then we'll have a good build-up heading into that Brumbies week, and uh, even by then I guess we'll know a little bit more about what's happened in Africa and and Aussie, they would have, the Africans would have played two more rounds and the Aussies won before we get back into it. So, um, but, you know, we just, we just had a quick chat in the room. But, you know, this time last year we beat Wales and didn't win a title. So um, I'd be much happier uh, winning a title and losing tonight.